Gerald W. Brister on the road here at the Pioneer Village Museum in Bakersfield, California. A lot of really nice stuff around here, a lot of nice props to make our videos. I saw this train and I had to come over here and film by it. It's a great prop to talk about what I was going to talk about today. Most of you guys, even if you're a welder, you don't realize the conflict that has existed from the beginning of the oil industry to today, actually. In the old days, when oil was first found over in Pennsylvania, it was put in barrels. And that's where we get that term, a barrel of ore, 42 gallons. And it was loaded in um, wagons like this, and then it would be shipped. As the popularity and demand for oil gained, we needed to ship bigger loads, and we need to ship faster. So that's when they got the idea to bring the barrels of oil, load them on the rail cars, and take them into the populated cities. The problem was Mr. Rockefeller, you've heard of the Rockefellers and Standard Oil Company. He had just um, been a part of some strikes for oil, and he was in competition with other people, and he was very, very uh, competitive. Let's just say that and be nice, okay? Very competitive, kind of whatever works competitive. And he wanted to ship his oil. Well, there was another guy, and he was a bigger dog in the fight. And he wanted to ship his oil. And so he made it hard for uh, Rockefeller to ship his oil, and he controlled the price of the shipping. And so Mr. Rockefeller decided he would lay a pipeline. And if you've ever looked at the different pipelines, a lot of them started uh, out of wood at first, kind of like barrels. Long joints fastened together. They got more sophisticated, more sophisticated, okay? But from the beginning of the oil industry, there has been a competition between the railroads transporting oil and the pipelines, okay? It carries on even to this day. I've been on jobs one time where uh, we had a really hard time making a tie-in because it was close to the railroad tracks. And the railroad people give pipeline people a fit. You may not know that, but it's a fit. It's a fight that's ongoing in a general sense. All right, all you guys that are union or non-union, doesn't matter to me, we need pipelines in this country. And one of the biggest competitors, when you get behind the scenes, that is trying to stop a lot of these pipelines, I think, are the railroads. That's the information, and that's what I've gleaned from doing the research. A lot of the oil that wants to come out of Canada, you Canadians, how is it being shipped right now? It's being shipped on somebody's railroads, isn't it? Pipelines in the past, I'm going to be doing a series about pipelines and ruptures and uh, what all happened. The uh, seams on big pipe before were not really good. But that stuff today, the pipe is excellent quality. The seams are meticulously inspected. And the safest way to transport petroleum products or anything else that you're worried about is by pipeline. I'm Gerald W. Brister, and in a minute we'll talk some more about that.